Content warning. The following podcast contains topics involving child abuse, suicide, depression, illness, death, and trauma. Listening discretion is advised. Welcome to Gate Crashers, a podcast dedicated to kicking open the door to your next favorite thing. Our mission, our creed, our code is this, to make all things nerdy more approachable and accessible to everyone. We want you to find a universe that you'll fall in love with. I'm Jake. I use he, him pronouns. I'm John. I use he, him pronouns. I'm Ashley, and I use she, her pronouns. How's everybody doing today? Anyone want to say anything? Well, we're getting ready to cry. (sighs) Jake, you son of a bitch. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yes, I am the villain of this episode. Jake you made us. Jake made us watch this. He did. Yeah, so we're talking about Your Lie in April, uh, mm-hmm. a sad music anime. Very Which sad. I should say, great anime. I'm just oh, mad yeah. that Jake made me watch it. it. Made me cry most of the time. Yeah, yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. And so this this is pro- this is not a great back of the box blur, but I really want to get to the discussion. Um, do you like classical music? Do you like characters dealing with complex emotions? Do you like feeling just plain sad? Uh, You're an ally in April. We'll give you all of that. It will. It's also a beautiful story and that you should all watch it. It's on Netflix. You can give it a click. A lot of things besides Netflix. It's on Hulu, HBO Max, Funimation, (laughs) Crunchyroll. There are so many places you can find it. There's also like uh, the live action version, which is probably a lot harder to find. There's a live action version? Yeah, I also think they're a little older. Okay. They're definitely not middle schoolers in that. Okay. That this story can translate. I was gonna say so. having adults play middle schoolers translates better than having literal middle schoolers deal show with these up. have these complex emotions and high emotional intelligence. Yeah. I don't know. Middle schoolers are uh, pretty deep. Pretty deep. Big so. mouth exists, though. Yeah, and then um, if you want a little bit of a brief history, uh, the piano used to be called the piano forte, meaning soft and loud or something like that. <laughs> what is this? Um, I told I can't you guys. You read that with a straight face too. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> yeah. She didn't realize. I, like, how I think we're supposed to move on. All right, so I just want to tell a little story about myself and when I found this. Uh, I was in, like, the deepest depression of my life. Um, <laughs> and Ashley just like, oh, no, <laughs> I can't laugh at this. Um, yeah, I was, a real, I was in a real bad place. Um, a bunch of stuff happened. My dog died. I got, well, my the, my girlfriend at the time almost died. Then she broke up with me, which, it's that I mean, that that's a different story. Uh, my grandfather died. Um, I, wa- I was watching this. It was the only thing that helped me get through my junior year of college. Um, yeah, things like that. That is some dark stuff. Yeah. I know we want to get to the meat and bones, but we should probably also talk about who wrote this. Oh, yeah. And like how long it ran for and everything. So the manga, because this is based off a of manga, it was written by Naoshi Arakawa. I think I'm saying that right. I and think it so. was published in Monthly Shonen Magazine from April 6, 2011 to February 6, 2015, spanning 11 volumes. The anime was directed by, and again, I greatly apologize if I am butchering these names. I genuinely do not mean to. Uh, you want me to uh, read it? Yeah, if you know how to read it. Uh, it was directed by Kyohei Ishiguro and written by Takao uh, Yoshioka. And it ran from October 9th, 2014 to March 9th, 2015 on Fuji TV, spanning 22 episodes. Well, now that we're done reading off the Wikipedia page. I was like, where is this? (laughs) Me and John just have the whole Wikipedia page memorized, right, John? No, I don't. (laughs) I'm like scrolling. Like, where is this information? And also, we should... I know... Jake, you want to have your back of the box blur and like the plot, but like we should probably talk about what this thing is actually about. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. Wanna, you want to talk about that? Yeah. So this is about uh, uh, piano project Kosei Arma, who is a famous child musician 
uh, recently loses his mother and because of that has a breakdown while playing the piano during a competition and he no longer can hear the keys or notes. So cut to a couple years later and Kosei is like viewing the world in monochrome without any color or flair. And then he meets Kari Meazano, uh, who is a free spirit. Kauri, excuse me. Maezano, who Maezono, who is a uh, free spirit violinist, who kind of helps Kosei break, come yeah, out of like his shell. Yeah, like break out of a shell. Yeah, she gives him color back in his life again. Yes, yes, color does play a big thing into the beginning of this. Yeah, and along with his friends Subaki and Watari, they just kind of help Kosei come out of his uh, darkness that he was in. I was going to say, we, we probably should have recorded this right after we all finished. <laughs> it's only 22 episodes. The information's kind of leaving our brains. All right. So who wants to talk about the themes, Ashley? <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, themes are mental, physical illness, performance, love, coming of age. Uh, there is a lot of trauma also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Really a lot of, like, mental and physical illness, I would say. For sure. Hospitals. They're not your thing. Yeah. Maybe, that's... maybe don't watch this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but so if they are. People just really into hospitals. <laughs> Go for it. I don't know if McDreamy's in it, people, but uh, <laughs> if you're into, you know, that. The Grey's Anatomy crowd, this one's for you. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, um, so, is that the one with the helicopter crash on the guy? No, that was, e- wait, I think maybe, but there was an episode of ER where the guy got his arm cut off from a helicopter. So helicopters and hospitals, they're just, they go together, apparently. I don't think there's a helicopter in this. I think there was just pianos and violins and stuff. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Why am I in charge? <laughs> All right. <Don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. John, since you added to the who may like this, you're going <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, who may like this? Uh, fans of music dramas and school age stories, like Shut- coming of age, kind of those kind of things. People who like shonen anime, because let's be honest, half of this is a shonen action anime involving piano competition. Oh yeah, no, it's it's totally a sports anime. <clears throat> it's can definitely... we actually can we talk about shonen for a second? Yeah. Um, okay, just a question because I am relatively new to anime. Um, Do you want to know what the term means? Yeah, I would like some explanation actually, if you don't mind. It is a demographic aim. It's the aimed at demographic of young boys. I think like t- like. From anywhere from like eight to eight fourteen, something like that. It's it, it there, there's there's also My Shoujo, Hero Academia is, counts as one, uh, Naruto, One Piece. Okay. There's also uh, I, I want to say it's called Sanin, which is for uh, older men. Um, um, Jose, which is for older women, and Shojo, which is for young girls. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. But but, but Shonen yeah. has also taken on a life of its own and become like fighting action oriented stuff that also is like adventure and it's an umbrella term for a bunch of like mm-hmm. high energy. Talking about like series. friendship and the belief in doing your best. I feel like that's like in almost every Shonen. Hence why I associate Your Lion April, part of Your Lion April, with Shonen. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. He's got yeah, a strong, it, it do, strong it does, group of friends. Yeah, and it does have some comedic elements to it to lighten the mood. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, let's get into the. To, let's break the episode so we can actually get into the suction and stop making bad jokes. Because, <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. All right, the discussion <laughs> section. I broke it down by 
characters because let's, let's... I think that's best. Yeah, yeah this, um, is, this is this very is very character, character driven. Focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, this um, definitely isn't like driven so much by the action on the screen as it is by the characters' journeys. No, in fact. Yeah. It's funny that you say that because as I was watching it, I'm like, wow, like not that there isn't plot, but most of the 22 episodes really still focus on the same thing. That's like, well, yeah, just it, Kosei trying to get over the yeah, trauma that he has. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it, at its somewhere in there is a slice of life. So, yeah, you can't. The plot is always going to be grounded so yeah, like yeah. this is you my first to. time watching an anime of this nature because I usually watch action anime. Mm-hmm. More often than not, yeah. So let's talk about Kosei and his condition. So when he start when we start the series, he's he can hear music, but he if he's playing it himself, they eventually just start dre- being drowned out by his anxiety, anxiety, trauma, sees, and depression. Sees his mom a lot. Yeah, which, by, which by the way, his mom, the it, the mom version that he sees when he is afraid and playing is very scary. Oh yeah. yes, but I love the fact that you do not see the mom's face until like until maybe the last you, two you episodes. Get yeah. an idea of <clears throat> why she was the way she was. That was a big reveal. We'll we'll go there later when we talk about his mom. But I was actually surprised. Yeah, it, it's. Well, I mean, we can talk about what she did to him because that is a part of Kosei's journey as well. Yeah, she, so she abused him. Yeah, like, like it's not even like like it's not even like subtle or anything. Like, no, she abused him. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting too because after I realized that he was being abused physically, like I think there's one scene where uh, Subaki like is having flashbacks. It's kind of like. Her episode, I think that is like, yes, yes, the mud ball episode. So she's like, it's seeing it through her eyes. You physically see how damaged and hurt he is, where it's very interesting when the episodes that are through Kosei's eyes, a lot of the time he's looking past his trauma when he's just trying to like shove it down. And it's not as noticeable almost unless he's like on stage and having a physical like trauma attack. Yeah, he, he, or like he when always, he's talking, like when he's like, "Hey, can you come out and play?" And it's like, "What happened to your arms?" And you realize, like, yeah. "Oh, oh, like that's an example." Yeah, and I think even in the flashbacks in the first couple episodes, a lot of the time he was like in long sleeves. Yeah, and no, it, they mentioned it, that, and when the uh, the crowd, the like, crowd of kids, is like gossiping about him being a robot, um, they like, "I hear his mom beats him and all of that." He's always wearing long sleeves. Yeah, things like that, and the kid it's kind of tortured him. Well, yeah. It, his mom kind of forced him to play the music as perfectly as possible without any flair or passion to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was Which made him a technically perfect pianist, but not really one that was inspiring, I guess, for people to watch. Yeah. And I mean, no matter what anyone says to him until he meets Cowrie, he he's really not into <clears throat> anything regarding playing the piano other than transcribing mute like anime songs into, yeah and like, I, I thought music. that was that was interesting too that like he still was involved in music some way that kind of showed you that he really did have a passion and love for it but because of the trauma that he had gone through he had like a disconnect with it well, but I there was still it's important something to there. remember that his mom wasn't gonna show him how to play piano. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. It was his yeah, mom's you don't best learn friend, that till the end. Uh, yep. Hiroko Seto, who really convinced her to push him into music. And that learning that actually was just such an interesting thing as a viewer because it's just like, how did the dots go from you don't even want him to learn to the point where you're like physically abusing him? And it's very interesting because, again, this is something you learn later, but Kosei really attaches his mom's illness to his perfection abilities. yeah and his the perfection and his abilities and being able to play so when something really bad happens with his mom and she are we allowed to say what we can say what happens to her uh i mean i think it would be actually a good idea if we moved talking about his mother up before we start talking about cowrie 
Yeah. He has to get yeah, past fine. his mother, his mother's passing before he allows Cowrie to really drag him in. Yeah. And that that alone, that reveal of him thinking if I that, play better, yeah, that he had it will control. Make his mom feel better, and yeah, and then she dies. Yeah, no well, wonder he thought. Well, that. I mean, well he, first he, off, I feel like it wasn't even that. I feel like it was before that. It was he tried playing perfect. He played what he felt was the best he could. Mom said it was enough. Slaps him in front of the entire crowd. Well, well, yeah. hold on. He she didn't just slap him. She Good. hits him with a cane. Yeah, she beat yeah. him really bad in front of a crowd, and it isn't until. His glasses are shattered and yeah. he's bleeding. Blood streaming down. Yeah. yeah. That, and then he and says she, the whole thing of like, I wish you were dead. Yeah. That was a that was a tough scene to watch. And that whole episode where that's all revealed was that actually was a, lot. a very difficult episode yeah. to watch. And I mean, and then Hiroko scolds uh, his mother. Her, yeah. And her, his mom explains... That the reason why she's doing it is because if she can make him a perfect pianist after she's gone, because she knows she's gonna she's gonna die, and his father is really never there. Yeah, he's never there. He's in a he goes abroad for business a lot, and his neighbors kind of took care of him, and so did uh, Hiroko. But she wanted to make it so he could use music to support himself. Yeah. And. Oh, that was such a weird thing to realize as a viewer. And kudos to the showrunners because they really plotted this out so well. There were so many flashbacks, like the scene where his mom is beating him with the cane. You had already seen that episodes before, but you had no context to it, so you were just reacting to seeing his oh, yeah, mom you just beating get him. Oh, Yes, yeah, and, and they did such a great job really just, like, drawing that out. And that's what I mean about the show really having, like, one singular plot all the way through, because you do, you get these moments, but just glimpses of them, and then you when you finally get that payoff, Oh wow, it is so emotional. Yeah, I, I really want to read the manga so I can see how the pacing compares. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be curious because I did like the whole um like for twenty two episodes, this was a nice like I like the fact that it was such a contained story. I agree, like, yeah. Did was this I know on Netflix they have it down as one season, but was it separate seasons when it no, first I think aired? It was just, well Because they so, go through like an intro change also. Yeah, that well, that happens normally after like twelve episodes of a, like halfway through an. Yeah, anime. that's that's pretty common. Um, is that the intro well, and the music song change? So one of the okay. things that I was explained to me in a by my Japanese history professor in college was that Japanese television kind of goes by like the physical seasons, not like seasons like we think about in like the U.S., where it's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it goes for a year and then it stops for like summer, and then comes back in the fall. Um, I've learned that recently. Yeah, it, it, it's like contained, like a show will be contained to the season, like spring. Like if this came out in the spring, it would come out in spring completely. Like I think that's actually how this came. No, actually, no, this actually came out from October to March. So never mind. I don't know how that works. I guess that doesn't, I guess that did not follow that. Just didn't apply answer. to this one. I, I appreciate ones, yes. the absolute gusto yeah. Jake went into how confident yeah. he was. And then I just. Am, uh, yeah. That was explained to me. And clearly it does not hold up to much. <laughs> um, You're lying, April. It is fall, sir. Yep. <laughs> it is fall, sir. Hey, it didn't even make it to April. <laughs> it, it went from October. <laughs> the show went from October to March. They, They're getting you hype for April. The manga went from April to February of four years later. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it's it didn't even get there. That's the real lie. It's the that's the lie in April. It didn't make it to April. God. Well, doesn't the anime take place over the course of hey, a year? Hey, everybody. Uh, the, <laughs> oof. The, the tone of this episode. I, no. Honestly, we, you, you can't talk about this and not laugh because yeah. of how heavy it is. 
Yeah, yeah like, if we were they... so somber about it the yeah. whole time, like, oh, here's the thing. This this stuff, the content in the anime itself is not a joking matter. We are all aware of this, but yeah, no, you, in order I mean, to talk about it, we need levity, in, at least in our terms, just to talk about why this is such a emotionally intense anime. But to be fair, I do feel like the episodes have an equal amount of levity. They use a lot of, like... I don't know if you would call them chibi characters, what they do. They're little asides where they freak out at each other and, like, there's the blood streaming from the head and they make it look, yeah. like, Co- funny graphic. I mean, outside of the, the whole Kosei getting beat with a cane and bleeding, he gets a lot of head injuries. Yeah, he gets hit with a he baseball. Does. He gets hit with everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Even, um... I mean, it's actually good that it's not a baseball; it's a softball. Yeah, that's true. It's softball. I think Cowrie even hits him over the head with her like violin. Cowrie or something. is very <laughs> abusive towards him. <laughs> no, she doesn't hit him with the violin. She hits him with every other instrument she can find. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they just yell at each other all yeah. the time. Yeah, she wouldn't. She would never actively damage her violin. Um. So. Cowrie. Would we call her a manic pixie dream girl? Oh, of course. Okay, that's that's the vibe yeah. I got while watching. So, which is funny because jumping very far ahead, you realize she was not that. Yeah, no, she was no. very. Pl- I know. Uh, now that you say that, you're right. Do because- we just want to start with the lie? Yeah, we should say the lie. Okay, so it- she her her lie is that she likes watery. Yeah, that um, his friend. Yeah, his best friend, the soccer superstar of the middle player. school. The yeah. player in a literal sense in terms yeah. of soccer playing and in terms yeah. of Yeah. And- yeah, because Kosei only meets her under the guise of their having like a double date. A double date and he's just showing up to be Subaki's like Yeah, and extra. Sh- so it, I think we got to talk about Cowardy's history with Kosei. Um so she was in piano classes and she went to a performance for, I think, one of her cla- her friends and classmates. Yeah, it was like a recital. Yeah. And she saw Kosei play something and she just fell in love with it, ran home, told her, opened the door to her parents' uh, patisserie. Is that how you say that? Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. I would like to open one of those. But anyway, um, and she says, I want to play the violin. And they ask her why. And she says, so she can play a duet with Kosei. Which is interesting also because literally every other side character was impacted by watching Kosei play. Yeah, all of his rivals. Uh, yes. Takashi Aiza, Emmy. Mm-hmm. I just realized I didn't write the eye on Emmy uh, and Nagi Aiza, who he te- <laughs> who ends up teaching. Yeah. But- <laughs> John, you wrote that Takashi has anime hair. He does, though. He does, though. He does. He's, got, he's got the sweat, too. Yeah. I, I love mean, how everyone from sweats Ka- in this. Wait, I love how we're jumping, like, from Kauri. Kauri. I cannot say the name. It's Kauri. Okay. Yeah, I think of it Kauri like those, those to, shells. Kauri to, shells. To the, to, to the rivals. Like, am I missing I something? I mean, this is happening organically, but we, we'll, come, we'll, we'll circle back to them. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Kauri. So we find out that she was always sick, but she kind of downplayed it to she the group. Downplayed? She straight up lied to them. She, she yeah, lied. She, she, she said that she, said that, she that was only, the lie. Yeah, she said that. that she, well, she knows she tells them that she's always been a little bit anemic, but she just kind of downplays it. But, uh, is yeah. that what they said it was? Was it like she, some kind of said. anemia or something? Well, no, they she don't. tells them it's anemic, but she loses some ability to walk too. I was thinking maybe it's like a tumor on her spine, something. No, because if she, I think it's M M S. Am I saying that right? M S. Mm. I don't think they say what's. They, they don't say. Um, they don't say what it is. It's it's just some. She does tell them that she's anemic, pro- but that's when she's. Like you're saying, downplaying. I refer to that as lying. But yeah, it, it's it. Yeah, it, it, it's. She's definitely not being entirely truthful with yeah, the group. No. Granted, I would say that's a different type of lie. It's like a little white lie, 
And so that's a more personal lie. That's a personal lie. That's yeah. The lie. It is about her health. Yeah, that that is something she can personally hide and reveal as she feels necessary. Yeah, when I say lie, I don't mean it that she's a bad character. Like she's keeping them something from them. Amazing character. Yeah, I love her. She's so full of life and. Also, I don't think it's anime unless they have like hair in their eyes, and she is that character oh, oh, for me. I love. Like... I actually, I want to point this out. Um, I mean, when we're looking at Kose from an, from the side, his the side of his glasses always disappear, so yes, you can see I his know, eyes. I noticed and, that too. And when you're seeing like Watsuri or any character behind the fence, mm-hmm. the, the the part of the fence starts fading. And you see their face. Yeah, I thought that was actually such a cool decision. And I think I've seen that done. Um, like, I read some, like, manga-style, like, webtoons. And I've seen them utilize that before. So I kind of thought that that might be what they were doing. But mm-hmm. uh, this was the first time I had seen it in, like, a cartoon anime type thing that I watched. Okay, so... Kose... Should we talk about how Kose meets uh, Kaori and somehow accidentally takes a picture of her underwear? Yeah. He, well, first off, he yeah, finds her pants. That's, yeah. She she puts her tights on a tree. He grabs them and it's like, yeah. I don't know who these belong to, but I'm just going to, you know, look for the, who they belong to. And then she's playing with some children, playing music with them. Granted, I don't know why she took off her tights, but. She's in a dress, so it's yeah, not that. She's a, a free like, spirit. She is. She's a free spirit. Um. Yeah. It- and this starts off one of my favorite running jokes, where every time she, she sees yells at him, friend A. Well, yeah. not even friend. No, I'm not talking about friend A. I'm talking about like she always calls him a pervert, like every now and again, and just yeah. They I do think walk. The, the they get- do walk into her hospital room too, and she's like, "Just when I take off my shirt." And she's yeah, because so she's mad. getting a sponge bath. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You don't see anything, by the way. This is no, very- no, no. It's. It's also middle school students. Yeah. It's just part of the comedy. Yeah. Segments. It, it, it's it's supposed to, you know, add some lightheartedness to Yeah. It's very tasteful. Yeah. She some has humor, her little outbursts of just chaotic energy and it's great. Um and she convinces Kosei to be her accompanist. And As convinces or forces? Forces. 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 Um, she yeah. drags him there, kicking and screaming. Literally. And he ta- partially ruins her performance and then gives makes it the best performance. And then she collapses. Yeah. And that's when they start realizing something's oh, not. Yeah. And Throughout the show, he, Kosei, Kosei knows. Kosei knows she's getting worse and worse. Yeah. And then she blows up at him because he's not... Because I think it's when he takes on Nagi as a student and she's like, you have to focus on this. You have to get better you, and all that stuff. Yeah. And he sees a flash of his mother in her and then she... It's- very eerily said well i think it's not even that i think it's the fact that he sees that something's wrong and he even says like please not again please 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 not again yeah he can't he has so much trouble bringing going to visit her in the hospital because of just the connection um it's funny because it's two layer sometimes he doesn't want to go to the hospital and see her because internally he already watched that happen to his mother but there's also a lot of the times where he doesn't want to go to the hospital because watari's there and he is struggling with his feelings and being feeling like he's in the friend zone and doesn't want to interrupt them yeah friend day yes friend day um as much as she's the driving force to Kosei breaking out of his shell, she also is very absent in a lot of the show, too, because she is sick. And it's her illness that is like. I mean, you can argue that all of the things he does throughout playing are for her. Yeah. Because he does have her listen to him and Nagi play. Mm hmm. And he even takes on, like, her little prayer that she used to say before she would begin. 
He, I think he only does he say that in his last performance? I can't remember. He no, he only says it when, when he's with he Nagi, does right? it with, with Nagi. Nag, Nagi. Yeah. Um. Who sounded yeah. like the voice actress to Sailor Moon? For Sailor Moon Crystal, I think it's her. I haven't seen Sailor Moon Crystal, so I mean, I will tell you right now if that's true. <laughs> she was also a voice actress in uh, Violet Evergarden. I could tell as soon as I heard. For some reason, I just always have an ear for Sailor Moon voices. <laughs> so every time I watch something, I'm like, "That's yeah, a Sailor uh, Moon." <laughs> I, uh, I can not pick out. Sailor Moon. No, I, oh darn it! Okay. I can always pick out who, anybody who uh, Yuri Lowenthal is playing. Well, yeah, you're. It's very easy when you know what voice actors. Yeah, if you know what their name is. Yeah. Not even that you know their name. If you know their name and you know what their voice sounds like in almost every performance. Yeah, like. Troy Baker, Great. Nolan North. I, I, I was convinced that Yuri Lowenthal sounded the same in every show, and then I listened to him do all of his characters one by one. I'm like, oh no, these are actually different. I just know it's him. <laughs> um. So, do we want to talk about Kosei's final performance? Oh my god! If you want to talk into- about devastating. Yeah. Yeah. So Kosei's playing at one of the biggest competitions in Japan because he has to perform well so he can get into a music program at a high school that he wants to be in. Um, and as he's playing, um, it's important to, well, it's probably, I could probably jump back a quick second and say, after Kaori has basically given up on life, after she got her one wish of playing with Kosei. Um, he convinces her to want to play with him again. So, and she, she knows she doesn't have much time left, but she's like losing her, her muscles are atrophying. Like she can't yeah. even hold the violin. Yeah. At what point she wasn't even going to go through with surgery or anything. Yeah, she he was convinced just, her. Yeah. Well, she. Well, she. 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 He, was. She. She, she, she had a reason. It. She went through with it. She had but, a reason to live, really. Yeah, and. She, oh wait, I I, I kind of want to talk about the uh, on the um. The roof in the snow. My God! Yeah, because I, oh. I I was just thinking about you when you said that um, the time where she plays um, air violin. Yes, uh, that was that scene actually really broke me. That was like one of the first times, besides the mother stuff, where I was like, "Oh God, it's beautiful, visually stunning." Yeah. Um, and then you jump back when she's she's in surgery as he's playing the piano. And then suddenly, halfway through his performance of his second song, um, she materializes and they play together. And in she's like a spirit. And as she starts fading away, he knows that she's dying. He he knows the exact moment that she dies. Cue my tears. That's when I started yeah. crying. I was like, oh, no, she didn't make it through surgery. Yeah, I, I, I had seen this before. And I couldn't, couldn't not cry. Um, I kind of thought once she went through with this, like decided she was going to do the surgery. I thought she was going to be fine. I thought so too. And then she, <laughs> they got in there, and she started having the uh, like seizing up. Yeah, I got. I was real... like, de- I was like, oh no! And then from yeah. there, it was just even sadder than I already I do, was. I, I kind of want to talk about that. Like, how do you? What do you? Do you think the sh- the series would have? Been comp- how different do you think it would have been if she survived? Oh God! Uh, like, I think would they diff- have ended up together or? I don't know. That's would the a lie good question. Have continued? No, I think she would have told him eventually. Yeah, I think she would have told him, and yeah, then because I think part of the reason it was a lie was because they're middle schoolers. Like they're just not honest with their feelings. Not even that, but I think also it was. Well, I mean, um, her her whole idea was to not step on Subaki's toes. That's true. That's true. We'll we'll Forgot. talk about Subaki after that. Um, but I think they would have probably gotten together. It wouldn't have been right away, but and you probably would have gotten another season. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I get the way the story, how it ended, but thinking about it. I think it, even though it made me sad, and I would like to think that she lived on, it actually ended the right way for the show. Yeah, I, I mean, you wouldn't have gotten any payoff to the Subaki yeah. stuff at all. No. Um, I think the only person who kind of gets screwed over in the whole long run for the whole lie is Watery. Yeah. Yeah. D- though, does he care? He cares I, a no. little, a I little mean, bit. At he the cares end. a little bit by keeping a picture of them on his phone as his memory. Yeah. But he's like, I'm flirting with every other girl I meet. Yeah. Yeah. He he, he kind of knows his life path is different than all of theirs. Yeah. He, he even talks about other girls in front of Gallery. That's. Can I just tell you that yeah. I actually like didn't even realize that she and Watery were really like an actual actual thing until like Kose yeah, was I thought, getting like, they nervous. They went on like one or two dates, and then that yeah. was it. And then I was like, oh wait, no, like Kose actually thinks they're dating. <laughs> I yeah, like they, they really weren't a thing. And then at the no. end, where he's just like, hey, listen, I really really like your girl. I was like, oh wait, yeah, they are still dating. That's yeah. that's right. They've been dating this whole time. What the? What are? What are you doing? Well, well, hold on. How, other than Tsubaki, who isn't he dating? Yeah, it's true. His phone will like ring and it'll say like other girls' names on there. It's normally the same girl who's yelling. Or he's like looking <laughs> yeah. at like the other girls in the competition, or like looking at uh, yeah, Emmy, Cos- Emmy. By the way, justice for my Nagi comment being Sailor Moon. She is Stephanie She, who is also Usagi Tsukino. Okay. Sailor Moon and everything. The Sailor Moon. Uh, I have to. I, I've actually been curious to watch uh, Sailor Moon Crystal. I liked it. I we only watched ta- the original anime as a child. I also watched that as on. a child. I, it was oh God, just I on. Realize. I don't. I don't remember anything other than. I think the cat. I didn't realize how much Stephanie Shea was in. I know she's in so much, but I, for some reason, it's just like it. Her voice is just yeah. The, 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 these voices into are my in your actor. name. Are you yes. kidding me? Yes, I listened to it and I was like, Sailor Moon. <laughs> and she's yes. Minata, and she's Orima. Oh my god! I know she's in everything. That's she's why I can everything. always pick oh, her voice goodness. out. Wait, wait, she was Hinata. Yeah, she's Hinata. 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 She's also Yui in Sword Art. Huh. You're welcome. Huh. huh. Then, then again, the the voice actor pool of American voice actors yeah. in anime is it's not that large. Um, yeah. It's like, what I mean, was what, it? What name an it? anime that Johnny Young Bosch is not in. I was, what was it? I'm watching Full Metal Alchemist and I see Tucker. I'm like, that's Android 17. That That's who that is. <laughs> All right. Oh, so uh, now, now I'm just thinking about how how I ruined Amanda's life by being on that episode with her. <laughs> Full Metal you know, Anyway, so who's who's next? The friends. Yes. Even yes. though we started talking well, about them, we kind of talked about. I feel like we don't need to go into Watery that much because no, he's very. And we really like, talked about him. He's very peripheral. He's just kind of like a plot device a little bit, but he's yeah, a good like friend. A, he is a good friend to Kosei, and I think yeah. I think he knows. I think he really understands that. Yeah, I agree with you. There are moments there where he's Co- especially giving, like, counsel to uh, Tsubaki, and he just sounds way wise, wiser than he really should Yeah, sound. he's not dumb. <laughs> no. Not dumb at all. Um Mm-mm. It's. Um, it, it, it is just a wild situation that he, he, he just goes along with. It. He's just rolling with the punches at that point. Yeah. Um, but Subaki, she is another good friend. She's been with Kosei his entire ba- life. Yeah, they're, 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 they're neighbors, life. right? They're across the street. No, next door. Next door. Right next door. Yeah, yeah. And like, she is harboring a secret. That is it that much does, of a secret, though? It's that, not really much of a secret because no, everyone kind of um, everyone but them knew. Our boy Kose does not know. Our boy Kose does not know. She denies it for so long. 
I love how a lot of times when you see through her eyes, it's him going like, oh, I forget you're a girl sometimes. And she's just like so mad. I also I also really like well, that I um, mean, he, I her mean, friend all the gives brain her love advice. She gives him. Her friend is great. I love her, her friend. Her friend gives her love advice and she's like, when did you get so like well versed in love? And she's like, boys manga. No, yeah. no, boys love manga. Boys yeah. love manga. <laughs> She's reading Yaoi manga. <laughs> She's reading free. <laughs> swim, boys, swim. <laughs> That's what that one's about, right? Swimming anime. Yeah. I mean, when I hear boys love, I'm assuming it's uh, I, well, my brain is like, like is it free that... and uh, Yuri on Ice? I just like that her friend decided to um her friend is like a, a bit character until like maybe halfway through the anime and then just goes into a supporting role yeah but yeah, it, it's... i did like the whole conflict she has between do i like him or do i like this boy that is like a year older than us yeah, and then yeah, he, she does have a love interest for half of the show. That's right. Yeah, he's a baseball player, and he breaks up with her because he kind of realizes, oh yeah, I got, I, I met this other girl, but uh, you're in Nikose. Um, yeah, Kose. Part of me wonders how much of that was like a lie, and he was just trying to spare her because he just knew she wasn't into it. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I think it was. Yeah. Poor Subaki. She just was like, but she also knew that Kose seemed to be desperately in love with Kaori. Mm -hmm. She was stuck. And then Kose says he's going to leave also and go to school abroad. And then she gets even worse. Yeah, she, she kind of just goes nuclear at that point. Um, yeah. Yeah, she gets really upset with him. But again, they're middle schoolers and their emotional maturity is not. It's not there, so they usually freak out at each other. Uh, Yeah, it's not perfect. At that yeah. point. It, it, it's very much a. They're they're kids, they're they're young, they're, yeah. they're the youth. only one with any emotional intelligence is kind of Kosei and uh, Kaori. Kosei seems to have it because obviously Kosei... he's gone through such bad stuff. And he yeah. lives a lot Kosei, I think, has it together more Science because says he's dealt that with depression so much trauma. ages your brain. So yeah. it, it's, it makes sense. Um, yeah. Yeah, but so there's Subaki, and then we've got his rivals, who actually love the rivals a lot. As yeah, soon as they anime entered... protagonist. Yeah, as anime soon as protagonist. They... <laughs> He's got the chains this, and everything. Yugi Moto hairstyle looking yes! motherfucker. No, 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 no. That. He is I... he is totally Ichigo Kurosaki. He's got the bright hair, bright spiky hair. Oh, He's I, was got thinking, the chains. I was thinking Bakugo. Oh yeah, that works too. Um. But granted, he's not that explosive. Um, I mean, he's he's explosive about how much he hates Kosei he's until bombastic. Kosei says oh, until Kosei says a nice word to him, and then he's like, "Stop it!" I know, and he's like, "My foundations are rocked." Like he just thought, I don't know why they thought Kosei was going to be some mean like robot who only thought about like winning and playing loved, the piano perfectly. I loved Emmy's like determination to be like he's back I'm going to be him and then it's just like no she's just secretly obsessively infatuated with him I thought that when I was watching it it's very interesting when you get to see their rivals when you get to see everyone play their instrument it it gives you a window into who they are and everything that they're thinking. You get these really in-depth monologues to everything they're feeling and it's just like wow you learned so much <laughs> I will say that it, it, by the end, it seems like Kosei has a bevy of gir girls who are romantically interested in him. Yeah, a lot. Like, it was like Emmy, uh, Kaori, Tsubaki. Yeah, he had a whole host. Uh, Even, uh... The, the sister. 
Yeah, Nagi has like a little bit of a crush on him. Nagi's clearly. like starting to, yeah. but then he's just like, uh, no, I don't, no, I don't. Yeah. I can't fall in love with my my brother's rival. That'd be so cliche. <laughs> I love that they refer to everyone as rivals. It's so great. Again, this is a great sports anime. It is a sports anime. I mean, almost all piano animes are sports anime because they're always about competition. <laughs> Wait, there are more piano animes? Oh, yes. There's also oh uh, God, The Force of are. Piano, okay. which is on I, um, Netflix, you know, which is also pretty good. If this is the best one and this is a very good anime, I don't need to watch the other piano anime. I know. Anime. Sometimes it's hard to do a step down. Um, they're not as the sad. They're not as sad. Okay. I, I mean, there are other piano animes are kind of more piano animes than this is. Like The Force of Piano, which has had multiple versions. Um, oh, okay. Hiroko Seto. So that's um, Kosei's mom's best friends and the per- his his Kosei's teacher. Who, yeah, she is also a really incredible piano player. And she kind of disappeared after watching Kosei have a mental break. And because start- she's the one who told Kosei's mom, hey, your kid should be a piano player. Mm-hmm. I was kind of miffed a little bit, like knowing that she kind of just left Kosei alone after his mom passed and then yeah. his, his dad was never around that did not i know she tried to make I'm up for sure lost time i'm pretty sure his dad's not real i'm yeah. pretty sure dad is a fictional imaginary character yeah he, you don't see him in the show at all dad is the lion april he is <laughs> i don't know if it's just in april <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> That She's is the got, lie all year round. She does have a daughter, and she does not seem like she had a great marriage. I don't think she's married anymore. No, it said she was still married. Oh, did it? She was definitely, like, hating on I her think husband. So. <laughs> I think he's probably also abroad. Yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> she's great. I mean. She is a really she's fun. She's so she, sassy. I love it. Yeah. She infuses a lot of life towards the end where it's starting to get really sad. Yeah, she 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 also frames a lot of the surrounding situations in a way that Kosei can't. Yes, because her flashbacks really fill in a lot of the material that Kosei just doesn't didn't wasn't he wasn't capable of seeing. Yeah, I don't think he was able to see himself sleeping under a piano. No. Listening to his mom play Love Sorrow. Which, that was beautiful. Also, a lot of people think something is wrong with him when he's asleep under a piano. That That is a gag that they run multiple times in the show. Multiple, I don't think it's a gag. I just think it's like he's so attached they're, to the piano that They're concerned that, he's, that he's, he's not taking care of himself. Yeah. That he's just... But he needs his egg not, sandwich. Yeah, only egg sandwiches and milk, um, milk <laughs> cartons and milk ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Not even just milk ice cream. That's like a milk popsicle. Yeah. Like. Also, real quick, off topic. So, the music in the first of all, the music's great in this anime. Great. But oh, there's fantastic. This, like, there's this recurring th- piano bit that they have in like some of the quieter moments. And I swear to God, it sounds like the opening the Doki Doki Literature Club. And I swear to God, I thought to myself, if this turns into something like Doki Doki Literature Club, I will lose it. That would be amazing. Ashley, don't play Doki Doki Literature Club. Okay. Jake. I thought the music was great, too. Jake, do you know which one I'm talking about? Yes. Um, what seems like a dating sim and turns into a hellish nightmare? <laughs> I've never played it. I just know what it is. Oh yeah, it's that's another episode. That's another. That's another time. Anyway, no, I don't think we're ever going to talk about Doki Doki Literature Club, John. No, well, on, gate, we, on Gate Crashers. Uh, hi, uh, people. Gate we're, streamers. We're, we're going to we zoom. We're going to um. You know, we're always looking for hosts. You know, all of that jazz. Um, if you want to talk about Doki Doki Literature Club and make John play it. No. Um, come no. on the show. No. He wants to play it again. No, it, Scarlet's got the streaming set up. I don't. <laughs> if you want to make Scarlet play Doki Doki Literature Club. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Scarlet. <laughs> I'm going to get yelled at for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make a comparison. You, Actually, no, Dan probably doesn't know what Doki Doki Literature Club is. I don't he know would, what it is. He would probably love it. Should I Google it right now? Yeah, no. Over? Yeah, just don't look up any videos of it. Because, like, just, it, honestly, it's it kind of like disturbing. going into. Actually, you know how in Dan and Scarlett's office, Scarlett's side's kind of pink, and then yeah. Dan's is kind of normal? Or, what do you mean by he, normal? Um, well, he's probably got like a hellish back uh, background there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I would assume Doki Doki Literature Club is like. Okay. All right. I got you. Just taking those two and just merging it. Putting them together. Well, no, you're looking at Scarlet Side. It's all pink and vibrant and stuff. And they <laughs> turn is, around and you see I the green, for... like five green goblins um, like <laughs> shaking their ass and stuff. That's what I assume it's like. Okay. And then there's a Maryland flag. In I did, there for I did some not reason. mean to get this so wildly off the rails. We uh, like, yeah, here it goes. Set to, uh, I just, just want to make a comparison saying that the music, opening music sounded like this. And I swear to God, my opening notes for the anime that I had were like, if this turns into Toki Toki oh, Piano the Club, beautiful, I'm going to lose beautiful my mind. settings like, that take place throughout every song. Like the world around you changes and you're just in like, um, like a field of sunflowers or something <clears throat> what when you're watching this show well, no like they're playing music yeah like, it's, they get, yeah it transports them yeah it's beautiful yeah they play like, some it, really like great... in the end where he's playing with uh kauri in the field and oh yeah and then she almost the looks like ethereal and, and look, yeah it is ethereal um yeah top three like sad moments and I've then ever she seen, like, blows year. up into she like Become she fades dissolves. away. She yeah, she fades, fades away. Not even just fades away. She goes out with a bang, like a yeah. firework. It was really beautiful. But it was sad. like I was. I was like. I tried like, to watch this once uh, a second time once before, and I just couldn't. Yeah. I could not. It really picks some great classical pieces, like not stuff that you listen, you hear a lot, like from popular people, but. Still kind of like, I don't know, just there, it felt new, even though I knew that they were classic pieces. Yeah, um, mu- uh, piano animes, especially love Chopin. Yes. Chopin. Yeah. I, it's interesting because, I mean, John knows this, but my son has autism and he's mm-hmm. like mm, super, super duper into uh, orchestrations and like... Huh. Listening to classical music, and yeah, he would, yeah, yeah. You, you you started watching it with him. Yes, I did. So I I think I told you guys this. We got yeah. stuck on the fifth episode when he goes to play with Cowry like the first time, and they're at that piano competition. When I was watching it the very first time, he came running from the other room and then told me what piano piece they were playing on the TV. And I that's like, amazing. Yeah, he was like, Saint "That's Sienz. incredible." I know he is. <laughs> It's and like, then what was really? it? He had you like watch it or listen to it, like. Oh, we did not. I didn't get past the f- the fifth episode for a really long time because he like latches onto something, and then we have to watch it over and over again. So he really liked where Kose didn't want to go to the competition, and then she would like yell at him and say he'd have to go do it, and then they would play on the stage, and everyone would applaud. And it must we be had nice to... to have a little weeb. Oh, it is. <laughs> would that be a weeblet? I guess he's but now he would come to me and he would go like we watch April we watch April and I'm like okay like, yeah so to he me, actually loved this oh, show at least it's the first like five episodes and not anything afterwards yeah, yeah and I mean he watched him watch it. I mean he did watch a lot of it with me but it's not I don't think he understands the dialogue he was listening a lot to the music and that was what he was really focused on. I don't think he got the bigger story. Yeah, arcs. You're, I, I mean, you could probably yeah. just grab those from like YouTube and then show. Yeah. Them. Yeah. It was actually, it was really nice. I mean, he didn't watch the last few episodes, but definitely the ones where he was like teaching Nagi and there was definitely a lot that he liked. Yeah, there. I mean, there was definitely stuff that you couldn't yeah. show him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to your discretion, parents, obviously, like some things, you know, your child and what they can handle. Yeah, we, so. we already we already we already talked about how uh, 
I want to say Kose was like a nine year old and he got beat with a cane. Um, yeah, I don't I don't recall my son watching those episodes, but he definitely yeah, did I think like we, I the think piano we spe- recital. I specifically <laughs> said not to watch <laughs> yeah. that with him. <laughs> well, he did it. He didn't. I promise. There were definitely some other parts. And I think I messaged John about this where um, there is a moment where a cowrie like mentioned like a suicide pact with yeah she Co- said she says, Kose, and yeah, i was like in the hospital she I goes i felt like it you want to kill yourself nowhere. with me yes and it came out of nowhere and i was just like what am i watching what just happened this took a turn and then they were like just kidding i'm like you don't get about that that is <laughs> i know i was like oh man and then she brought it up like a second time i think it was actually around the part where they go outside in the snow Mm -hmm. Um, and she mentions it again and I'm like oh they're bringing this up again like okay Um, it was there's definitely some dark material in here um, for sure I I think it does find a balance in the humor and stuff but I do believe it it is it could be a lot of times Um, yeah it'll just come out of nowhere sometimes oh yeah just right out of nowhere and I think I think part of that like really shows you how trauma can affect you really at any time. All it needs is like one little thing to send you back to like a place that is really like de- debilitating for you. Mm hmm. It, it, it was. It was a lot. It, yeah, it is a lot. It's a very. You have to be in a certain state of mind to watch this. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Like I, I like mentioned, I was in the, the worst depression of my life. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, this is definitely going to be one of those where I recommend to people and I say, like, definitely watch it, but understand that you... You're going to feel things? You're going to yeah. feel a lot of things. Yeah. yeah, because I do feel, like we mentioned, like, your name, like, things that have made us, like, cry or be sad before... They're not necessarily in the vein of, like, different forms of, like, depression or those feelings that you yourself could be going through. And I I do think that, like, having the warnings is helpful for people to know what mental state to be in to watch it. Because you can be sad and watch sad stuff, but then sometimes these things can just be, again, triggering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there's another very... An anime with the main character is very, very depressed. I think that's more of a thing in this sh- that show. But um, mm. that's uh, March comes in like a lion. That's another, uh, you know, it's got another month in it. You know, another yeah. month. Yeah. <laughs> granted, granted that 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 shit that series gets a little weird. Um, yeah. With the main character and like it's- a love interest, but uh, that, 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 I digress. It's funny when we talk about like Kosei. He doesn't always he doesn't come across really as a depressed person, though, really in the show. It's no, they there's really a lot of masking. Ch- yeah. And that's exactly what it is, because he is clearly in pain, but he does a really good job of like hiding that for his friends a lot of the time. And I think that's why he distances himself from piano playing, because it's really hard to hide it when he mm-hmm. gets in there and starts playing again. Yeah. I mean, masking in any sense can be very difficult. Yeah. It, it, and it, I mean, whether it's just like depression masking, <clears throat> like neuro neurodivergent masking, like yeah. it, it, those are, I mean, I have the I deal, I deal with both. So I kind of have to, they're, they're very different feelings. Yeah. It, it, I mean, John, you can probably attest to that as well. Yeah. Well, that took a turn. Um, Sorry, guys. Pianos. It's, it's, uh, it's oh, a right. very, very, I remember just feeling the emotional, like, weight. Weight and maelstrom oh, of everything. Yeah. Like, I remember, like, I don't really cry at this anymore. Like, it takes a lot for me to do mm-hmm. so. But there were many times in this, especially at the end, where I could just feel my face, like, scrunching up. And it, I could just and feel it's like. Not- yeah. The, like, it, it, welling it's really up. not ham fisted. It's not. No. It's, it's like genuine. I, like I can watch yeah. um, uh, Grave of the Fireflies in like. Oh, I can't watch that. Oh, I've never seen that, but I know I, of it. Yeah. No. Uh, I actually, can't you want to know what's you want to know about what the, the message the the uh, director had in mind 
for Grave of the Fireflies. Wasn't it like anti-war? No, well, that's what the that's what the original poem is. Um, yeah, because it's a semi-autobiographical poem that it's based yeah. on. Yeah, but the main message of Grave of the Fireflies is listen to your elders. Yeah. You know, that makes, those that makes people a lot that, of sense. But the people yeah. who treated those kids like utter garbage. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, that's one that like is really affecting to me. Like, can't watch that one. It's really- I've, I've heard stories for years and I've just I've never gotten around to it. I know it's just going to be. It's an lot. incredible. Yeah, that, it's an incredible film, but it's but incredibly it's heavy. More- yeah, it's a little more ham fisted with its yeah. emotional weight. It, it throws. And like, I think the nice thing about Your Lion April is that it, it it balances like the weight and the humor so well. But like, when the humor hits, like you, or when the weight hits or the drama, you you feel. Yeah. And it's also all interesting that. that even though Kauri dies and Kosei feels the whole weight of that, he doesn't fall. Out of music again. No. Um, see, it brought it right back to the discu- the, the real discussion. Whew. And then he he goes on to, and start, starts playing piano even more, and he's more serious about it than ever. Um, Subaki. But I think him going, and Subaki got hit together. Do they get together? Do you think? They or? don't say. They don't say. But she gets into the high school that she wanted to. That's near his. Yeah. So they can stay together. Honestly, it's interesting because I sometimes like have weird feelings about uh, shows that maybe utilize a a manic pixie dream girl type to further a male character's journey and then they sacrifice her. Yeah, but this this isn't was very nicely done. It's this wasn't fridging. No, this also wasn't like ham fisted or just beat you over the head over and over. Because her death doesn't motivate it. No, her death is if, not if used anything. As a yeah, if anything, it really should have could have possibly driven him back into the place that he yeah. was like the problem with like fridging and stuff like manic pixie dream girls coming in and dying. Is it their death is supposed to like motivate the main character, mm-hmm. the male main character and like push them forward. But Cowrie does that while she's alive. She, she shows does. him yeah. what it's what it means to be alive again. Yeah. And and I think it's a it's more that she fights. She does fight so hard to live like she's not looking for the next exit to like be out of anybody's life. Like she desperately wants to, you know, just even be his like partner on stage and just be able to play duets together. But it's uh, it's so sad. Her story is so sad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it. it I mean, Kosei's story is the overarching frame of everyone else's stories, Mm -hmm. but everyone else has a story. They do. Other than Watsuri. Yeah. (laughs) Watsuri just has... The Isas have more of a story. Emmy has more of a story. Um, The cat has more of a story. Oh, we we didn't even talk about the cat! (laughs) The cat! really rough one for me too that hurt that ending All where he the brings the cat to that that killed me i had to look away the for a little the bit i agree oh. i was sobbing for that too that was a rough one yeah and then the there was his childhood cat chelsea um yeah and it's always a black cat um yeah it, it, it's he hallucinates about the cat a little bit for a period of time. He like well, yeah, the, like it it has like an older version of his own voice. Yeah, it's his like subconscious. Like it, it's not even like a negative aspect of his personality. It's just Mm-mm. there. Yeah. Yeah that that hurt that hit me that hit me hard. Oh yeah, the cat. The cat getting especially when he like walks away from the hospital and he sees the cat in the road under the light. I was like, oh no. Yeah, that was rough. And th- there was just like this moment where he's like looking at his hands and they oh have, like, wait, blood we should probably mention what what he had just seen at the hospital. Was that when wa- she had her seizures? Yeah, that's when him and yeah. Wasri had to leave because oh, she was that's coding. Right, that was right. Oh god. Yeah, and then he goes outside, and then 
I don't know why they split up or anything. Maybe it was just like, uh, how do we talk after seeing that? Um, yeah. But they then Kosei immediately sees a nice kitty cat that was very Kit. sweet to him mm-hmm. as he was trying to bring um, Kauri, um like she has a little pastries. treat. Yeah, like a little pastry that she likes. Uh, what, what was it? Um, Connellays? Yeah, Connellays. I've never had one of those. Me either. I gonna, I have not. I'm gonna Google. I'm what a they baker, are. and I, I I've never even heard of them before this. By the way, speaking of the bakery, I don't know why, but I swore when I heard Cowrie's parents, I thought to myself, that sounds like Jesse from Pokemon and Dan Green. <laughs> but it wasn't. I was disappointed. Maybe we should make Connellys for our uh, next video. Yeah, like cooking video. Well, look, I found them. Ooh, they're cute. They're like a little bread. Ooh, it's just like a little vanilla sweet bread cake. We should make this. I'm going to send it to you. Jake. Alrighty then, I'll make something. I mean, I can't go, I don't, it's rare that if I go to New Jersey, Dan doesn't request me making something. <laughs> I didn't realize you like to bake so much. Oh, yeah. That's that's one of my many hobbies. Many there you hobbies. go. I even have my own chocolate chip cookie recipe that's <gasps> I know, bomb. I got it, I got it off of the website. Isn't it on there? Yes. That was yeah. the second post. Yeah. Or something like that. Because what were we in the beginning? Uh, under my leadership, nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> I I remember, I think, like, one of our first three was, like, my Taylor Swift article. <laughs> it's like the beginning of December. God. Not April? Nope, not April. Our did lie not, in did December. not make it to April? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, did we finish recording? I don't know. I mean, we could. We we could just call it. Uh, well, this this show was great. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, so because I can't be trusted to tell people where to find us, you can find us on GateCrashers.fan. Yes, thank you. GateCrashers.fan. Also on Twitter, and Instagram as GateCrashersPod. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are. Are we? Do we have a TikTok handle? Do we have that up? Oh, we're we're Gatecrashers Pod on um, there, but yeah, on TikTok. Oh, that's that's what I thought the the, the website was. It wasn't dot fan. It was that I thought it was dot pod. <laughs> our links to our videos will be on there. YouTube videos and the mm-hmm. whole like, and go subscribe over there. And yeah. Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Gatecrashers.